Hi, this is Dr. Alemi with a lecture on comparing two independent means. This lecture is based in part on open intro statistics books. Recall the framework for hypothesis testing. First, we examine the assumptions, then state the hypothesis, calculate the statistic, look up the p-value, and then decide to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this set of slides, we apply this framework to comparing the means of two independent samples. We consider the difference in two population means under the condition that the data are not paired. The first step is to check the assumptions. The first assumption is that the, the two samples are independent. Usually it means that less than 10% of the population is sampled and the cases sampled do not share relevant characteristics. The second assum assumption is that either sample has near normal distribution, which implies that differences of the mean of the two samples also has a near normal distribution. The assumption of near normal usually translates to having samples larger than 30 cases and not very skewed, samples that are neither skewed to the left nor skewed to the right. In our framework for hypothesis testing, the next step is to state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the difference of the two independent means is zero. The alternative hypothesis, if you are doing a two-sided test, is that the differences of the two independent means are not the same. If doing a one-sided test, the alternative hypothesis is that the difference of the two independent means is higher than zero or lower than zero. The third step in our framework for hypothesis testing is to calculate the statistic. The statistic z is calculated from the point stem estimate minus the null value divided by the standard error. When we test for no difference between the two sample means, then the null value is zero. Then the statistic z is calculated from difference of the average of the two samples divided by the standard error of the difference of the two means. The standard error can be calculated using the standard deviation of each of the normally distributed samples. In calculating the standard error, S1, is the standard deviation of the first sample. S2 is the standard deviation of the second sample. N1 is the size of the first sample. N2 is the size of the second sample. The standard error estimate will not generally be accurate for smaller sample sizes, and this motivates the introduction of the t-distribution. When the sample size is larger than, uh, smaller than 30, but it is still normally distributed and independent, then the standard error can be calculated using the t-distribution. Like normal, it is symmetric, bell-shaped, and unimodal, but it has a lower peak and a higher percent of observations fall in the tails. The t-distribution is always centered at zero and has a single parameter, degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for a single sample is the sample size minus one. The degrees of freedom describes the precise form of the t-distribution. The larger the degrees of freedom, the more closely the t-distribution resembles the standard normal model. When the degrees of freedom is about 30, the t-distribution is nearly indistinguishable from the normal distribution.
For situations where we are dealing with normal independent observation, if sample size is less than 30, then we calculate this T statistic using this formula. The degrees of freedom for comparing mean of two samples is the size of the smaller sample minus 1. Next step in our inference framework is to look up the p-value. This depends on whether we have calculated the z or the t statistic. Here we're showing the standard distribution of z. If we have calculated the z, then we can look up one-sided or two-sided p-values by consulting z tables. If we have calculated the t statistic, then we look up the p-value in the standard t distribution tables. We start by selecting the row corresponding to degrees of freedom. We find the value of our calculated t statistic and then read the p-value on top of the column corresponding to the match t value. For example, if the smallest sample size had in our experiment had 19 cases, then the degrees of freedom is 18. The selected row in blue indicates the t statistics. If we have observed the t value of 2.1, then the one-tailed probability of observing this t statistic is given on the top, in this case 0 0.025. Last step in our framework is to infer from the sample if the population has the hypothesized null value. Let us look at an example. The left histogram shows weight of infants for mothers who smoked. The right shows it for mothers who did not smoke. The question is whether there is a difference between the mean of the two populations. Both distributions exhibit strong skew. Summary statistics are shown here for mothers who smoked and those who did not. Let us go through the steps in our fr inference framework. First, we check assumptions. Our first assumption was that samples are independent. There is some evidence that smokers affect non-smokers, especially if they live together. For mothers who do not live together or know each other, the assumption of independence of samples may be reasonable. The second set of assumptions is that both smokers and non-smokers have a near-normal distribution. This is verified if the sample size is larger than 30 and it is not strongly skewed. We saw that the sample size is 50 and 100, therefore both are above 30. The sample is skewed, but there, there the skew is not too strong. Therefore we conclude that at these large sample sizes, the assumption of near-normal distribution could be met. Next we state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the mean of the infant weights in the smoker and non-smoker populations. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. Notice that these hypotheses require a two-sided test. We can calculate the T or disease statistic. Since we have more than 30 cases, we calculate the z-statistic. First, we calculate the standard error of the difference of the two means. The summary statistic provided us with both standard deviations and sample size. From these values, we calculate the standard error to be 0.26. Next, we calculate the z-statistic. The difference of non-smokers and smokers is put into the equation. The null value is zero, as we are testing that there is no difference. The standard error was previously estimated to be 0 0.26, therefore the z-value is 1.54. We now look up the p-value associated with the z of 1.54. The z-score is 0.938 from the table, which gives us the p-value for the right tail as 0 0.062. Because this is a two-sided test, 
we want the area of both tails. We double this single tail to get the p-value of 0 0.124. The p-value of 0 0.124 is larger than the significance value of 0 0.05, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let us look at another example. The histogram here shows improvement in patient scores on a standardized test after the test was revised to be more culturally sensitive. The question is whether the revision has changed patient scores on the test. Note that the histogram is unimodal and approximately symmetric. Summary statistics for version A and version B are provided here. Let us go through the steps in our inference framework. First, we check assumptions. Our first assumption was that the samples are independent. This may be a reasonable assumption if the subjects recruited for the second sample had no relationships to subjects recruited for the first sample. The second set of assumptions is that the difference has a normal distribution. The histogram is not skewed and seems symmetric enough, but the sample size is smaller than 30. Therefore, we cannot make the near-normal assumption and need to use the t-distribution. Next, we state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there are no differences in the mean of version B and version A of the test. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. Notice that these hypotheses require a two-sided test. We first calculated the standard error. The summary statistic provided us with both standard deviation and sample sizes. From these values, we calculate the standard error to be 4.62. Next, we calculate the t-statistic. The point estimate of the difference is put in. The null value is zero as we are testing that there is no difference. The standard error was previously estimated at 4.62. Therefore, the t-value is 1.15. To look up the t-value in tables of t-distribution, we need an estimate for degrees of freedom. Here, the minimum sample size is 27. Therefore, the degrees of freedom is 26. We now look up the p-value associated with the t-distribution with 26 degrees of freedom. In the table, we examine the row of 26 degrees of freedom. Because the t-statistic of 1.15 is smaller than 1.31, the value on the left column of the row, the two-tailed p-value is larger than 0.200, or 20%. Because the p-value is so large, we do not reject the null hypothesis. In this lecture, we have used our inference framework to see how to compare mean of two independent samples.